bringing us to a program like this where the need of our own country is presented in all clarity and detail. Uh, we had a very good meeting last evening where the Lord enabled me to throw a missionary challenge on the gathering of about 250 people. By the sovereign grace of God, I have been very closely and actively and personally involved in missionary evangelism for the last 35 plus years. And the Lord in His mercy took me to almost all the states of India and enabled me to get involved actively and see for myself what God is doing all across Bharat. Um, uh, as Pastor Kuriya just now said that what has happened during the last decade is phenomenal and that is unprecedented. And I'm very excited that he is here pastoring this uh, congregation. I always remember him for many reasons, but one very important reason. In the 1970s, I lost my passport and all my travel documents because I did not have a proper briefcase. Everybody prayed for me, but Korean job did something more practical. <laughs> he got for me a Samsonite briefcase and he said, Brother, this is given with my love. Do you believe I still keep that uh, briefcase because that speaks a lot about this uh, man of God? And by the grace of God, after that, during the last 35 years, I never lost my passport. <laughs> <laughs> I praise God, we all have gathered here, here to receive a missionary vision and burden planted in our hearts. All over the world there is a great revival and awakening on the subject of missionary evangelism. Every other Christian talks about missionary work. Every other church talks about missionary support. And every prayer group talks about missionary sending. But I believe most of what's going on has not got its vision and burden developed from the Bible. It is from what they have heard told by some mission leader. I believe in statistics. I believe in stories. But if your missionary vision is built upon only statistics and stories, it is a very, very feeble structure. vision must not just be based on statistics and stories, it must be built upon scriptures. So as the Bible teaches,
teacher by calling I stand here to import and implant upon your heart this missionary vision from the very pages of the Holy Rich. My message this evening is titled as What is a Missionary Sending? urge you and request to you my dear brothers and sisters to please keep your Bibles open because you have to see for yourself whether things are so. And if you have perhaps not brought your own copy of the Bible, will you please look at the Bibles of your neighbor? What is missionary sending? I would like to begin with a passage in book of Romans and chapter 10. I will read from verse 12 to 15. During this message, I will say the scripture reference only once. So you need to be very alert. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon Him. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. inclusive statement, Apostle Paul goes to throw upon his reader five questions of challenge. Number one, how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? here without a preacher. And how shall they preach unless they are set? So here the apostle is developing a logical sequence of missionary progression. If you look at these four questions carefully, you find there are five groups of people. Group number one. Worshippers. Group number two. Believers. Group number three. Hearers. Group number four. Preachers. And group number five. Senders. Are you able to see these five groups of people here? I would call them the five actors on the stage of missionary drama. I have to change the order when I restate this list. First, senders. Second, preachers. Third, hearers. Four, believers. Five, and finally, worshippers. In other words, until and unless the first group called senders swings to action, nothing, I say, nothing ever begins to happen. So missionary work begins not with missionaries but with senders. Now it is important then for us to understand what is missionary sending. Is it just writing a monthly check and then offer a one word prayer? Forget about it. Right? 
It is something more than that. Let me add, it is something much more than that. Now this evening, I would like to choose my words very deliberately to lay a stress on what has to be understood by you without any ambiguity. Missionary sending involves five actions. And that is the message I'm going to preach to you during the next 80 minutes before us. Number one, what is missionary sending? It is praying for missionary work. Missionary sending means praying for missionary work. It is not only the first act, it also is the foremost act. What did Jesus say in Matthew's Gospel 9 chapter? is plenty but the harvesters are few so all of you go to the mission field that's not what he said the harvest is plenty but the harvesters are few pray therefore later on in the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel Jesus would say go therefore before Jesus said go therefore he said pray therefore. Before you can go to the mission fields on foot, you should go there on your knees. when he was writing to his apostle probationary by name Timothy he said first of all prayer, supplications, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. India can be saved first of all by tens and thousands of intercessors. So when we say we must pray for missionary work, what does it mean? We have to pray for the boldness of workers. You must remember, you are listening to your mission leader. I have not only mobilized missionaries and sent them to the front. By the grace of God, my wife and I, we lived right in the mission fields for several years. Two years we were in Karnataka. Three years we were in Orissa. Two years we were in Maharashtra. Then we were in Madhya Pradesh. So what I am speaking is not what I have read. The first thing you need to pray is boldness for the missionaries. you go to the forefront of evangelism, they are intimidated by so many threatening forces. Apostle Paul was a champion of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. But 
when he wrote to the Ephesian believers, you know what he wrote? As for me, pray that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly as I ought to speak, to make known the mystery of the gospel. Before Malayali Pentecostal believers in New York. <laughs> but to preach before a huge mocking and threatening audience in a state of Bihar, which is considered as a graveyard of missionaries, brothers and sisters, you need boldness. <laughs> the word of God with boldness, the next thing that you have to logically pray is that God would open the hearts of Lydia's who are listening to the God of God. Because the Bible says God opened the heart of Lydia to listen to what the apostles preached that year. This world has blinded the hearts of these people, lest the light of the gospel shall enter them. As we pray, because prayer is the arm that moves the world, at that time the word of the Lord will come upon the people, let there be light, and there will be light. receive the word of God and go in hundreds into the waters of baptism, the devil and all his armies will not sit in idle and say, wonderful great things are happening in West Bengal. <laughs> will not prevail against me. In other words, building and battling will go together. Once upon a time, if there is a threat that is sounded from an anti-Christian camp, it was an empty threat. But today, if a threat is served against a missionary, better you take it serious. After burning a medical missionary from Australia, Graham Staines, and his two loving, charming children alive in the deep and dark jungles of Orissa, India can do anything to God's people. Just like the early church, we have to unite our hearts and lift up our voices to God, the Creator of heaven, and not say, Oh Lord, look at their threatenings, let signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy child Jesus. When you pray like that, you will be filled with the Spirit again to speak the word of God with boldness. for the new believers because the 
moment in most of the Indian villagers, people accept the Lord Jesus Christ, they are thrown out of their community. Lord Jesus Christ when he was offering that high priestly prayer in John 17 the chapter you know what he said I don't just pray for themselves I also pray for those who would believe you after listening to them Psychological problem. They have physical, bodily, physiological problem. And they have spiritual problems. They have economic, they have financial, they have got material problems. They have social and cultural problems. Missionaries are superhuman beings. <laughs> That's a good translation. He says from another planet. <laughs> That's a good translation. <laughs> Even though I didn't say it, that is very nice. Uh, brothers and sisters, they are not angels, you have to understand them. <laughs> Missionaries are ordinary people like you and me who are attempting an extraordinary work. Protect the missionaries against any possible spiritual defilements. I protect the missionaries against possible diseases. in India, even today, there are certain kinds of malarial parasites. Once they attack you, they never leave your body, whatever the treatment you take. Into two aspects. 
സുവിശേഷ പ്രവർത്തനം ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ
But suppose somebody does anything that is not uh, acceptable, they immediately say, you pig. Immediately the crowd said, is it like that with you? Ah, But with me it is not like that. I say ma. Whether it's American cow or African cow or Australian cow or Asian cow, every cow will say ma only. With me, so they started thinking and they were talking. Then the cow found the answer. There is a difference between both of us. I give systematic. You will not give anything until you are killed. <laughs> Until you are diagnosed of the first heart attack, you will not think you are a liberal check person. Heart attack, heart attack, that is not there. Are you a cow Christian or a pig Christian? No, a cow Christian or a pig Christian. I don't know some Malayalam, but I don't know what to say. And willingly and systematically are only out of compulsion and pressure. You know, I have not come here to promote Oasis Missions International. I have come here to teach God's people how to be appropriate and proper scriptural missionary senders. for our company. We would like to employ you from 1st of next month. And you are asking the employer, but Lord, uh, but uh, dear sir, that's my first thing. How about the pay? Hey, don't you believe me? I will pay you whenever I feel well. <laughs> How many of you will take up that job? Now we don't take up a job if the employer will pay us only when he feels like paying. Why are we treating God so partially? When it comes to the question of missionary work, you say, I will give God whenever I feel like. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, this commitment is a part of a Christian discipline. Each organization has got several schemes, but I just want to say a few of them. which the missionary organization can keep in fixed deposit out of which interest they can regularly support a missionary. This is giving systematically. But that is not sufficient. 
Ahora, from systematic giving, you should graduate into sacrificial giving. I must give and give and give until I feel the pinch. Mind you, I have not come here to promote money, to raise money for my organization. I will not speak a single word about it. I have come to teach you, dear people of God. What did Paul say? I will very gladly spend that is systematic giving. Step number two. And be spent for your souls. Sacrificially gave, it becomes a sweet smelling offering unto God. The whole Christian world meditated, re-meditated on the death and suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ yesterday. The Roman soldiers were thinking they were killing the Son of God. Nobody murdered Jesus. Jesus died himself. You know what the Bible says? They were thinking they were finishing up with the Son of God, but you know what the Bible says? He offered himself as a sweet smelling sacrifice unto God. He was a millionaire and he was a cricketer from England. You know what he said? If Christ had died for me, no sacrifice will be too great. in the mission fields, several of them I have forgotten, but one thing never ever leaves me. It was in a remotest tribal village. And we were, uh, the ministry was to the poorest of the poor in that village. I was there to dedicate that new church building. Well, I was preaching with my dialect interpreter, a poor lady who didn't even have a proper clothing, maybe it was a tattered sari. She brought one coat in French. And she wanted to speak over the microphone. She interrupted my sermon, but I didn't want to stop her, so I let her speak. She covered her head. She said, Oh, you are married. This is what she said. I have two goats. They are all my life. I wanted to give one goat to Jesus Christ. But that goat became sick last week. It may become sick, it may die very soon. So I have brought the real good healthy goat to Jesus Christ. My friends in America, you are talking about giving? Here is an example. One goat might die next week, so I prefer to give the healthier goat to the Lord Jesus. That 
was a sweet smelling offer. Not only to the missionary work, we also should give to the poor people. You know, I always say when you give to the church, you give to God, but when you give to the poor, you lend to God. Jesus said, the poor are always with you. I have a question. Are we always with the poor? Put this question. Let it just go on grinding your mind. Jesus said, the poor are always with you. My question is, are we always with the poor? Jesus was identified with the poorest of the poor. He became poor to make us rich. Shall we? To make others rich. How many of us are willing? Please ask this answer this question. How many of you are willing to lower your standard of living to heighten the standard of life? Of other people. Are you willing to lower your standard of living to uplift the standard of life for somebody else? What this missionary is sending? Number one, it is praying for missionary work. Number two, it is giving to missionary work. And number three, it is refreshing the missionaries. Ah, it is refreshing the missionaries. Yeah, missionaries have their worries. They have their exhaustion. They have their tensions. Jesus chose soul disciples. And he sent them forth. The next but one chapter they are called apostles. Previously they were called disciples. And this chapter they became apostles. What happened? How did the disciples become apostles? Did you ever think about it? Very simple. The word apostle means one who is sent forth. That's all. Nothing more. But you know, our Bible, Bible translators were very afraid of translating that word. In Malayalam, it is apostles. It is not a Malayalam word. In English, it is apostle. It is not an English word. In Tamil, it is apostle. It is not a Tamil word. Nobody dares to translate that word. Why the church was sleeping for 20, uh, 2000 years without active involvement in missionary work? The word apostle means one who is sent forth. Sent forth, not forth. Sent forth. So Jesus sent them to the disciples. The next chapter they were called apostles. And he told them what to preach, what to do, everything. 
because he often refreshed that missionary Paul and in many ways he ministered to missionary Paul. of the Lord in our lives. We all want the grace of God to be abundantly outpoured on our lives. It is a foolproof method to get the mercy of the Lord directed towards you. Blessed is the one who takes pleasure in the prosperity of God's servant. God will show mercy towards that person especially in the hour of crisis. I say this from my experience and the experience of thousands of God's people world over. When Paul was writing to Philemon, you know what he said? Prepare a guest room for me. I will come and live a Oh, the church you know what he said we should send for these men with all dignity and worth because they are going to the Gentiles and they don't receive money from them we should honor such people being covered <laughs> will give them money, but they go to non Christian to whom they should give money. So as much as possible, in whatever ways, imagine, imagine those ways, be creative in some way or other, refresh the heart and the soul and the spirit of someone who goes to distant lands, goes to God forsaken places for the sake of the gospel. What is missionary sending? Number four, it is encouraging the work. It is encouraging the work. You know what is one of the major problems of missionaries in the field? Loneliness. You know, we backslide even in the midst of such fellowship. Even in such a warm, healthy fellowship, we cool down and freeze to death. But the missionary in a distant land has got only one other member to fellowship with him. You know who he is? He is another fellow struggler. <laughs> Whenever you go to India, friends, I would like to give you a very practical counsel. If you go for three weeks or four weeks on vacation to India, before, under the word before, before you board the flight, you decide you will visit any one mission field at least for one after landing in India if you want to plan to visit a mission field I tell you I am not a prophet 
I am not a son of a prophet either, but I prophesy you will never visit a mission. You be with your ladies for three weeks or four weeks, they will not be satisfied. <laughs> and five of your members take two pieces of 70 pounds each and go there, you cannot satisfy. <laughs> but I am giving you another prescription. <laughs> One week you go to a mission field. Remember to take your children with you to the mission. Your children don't respect food in this country. They don't respect to play things in this country. They have no value of things today. You can't teach them how to value things as long as you are here. Take them to a mission field. Put them in the mission field for one week. I tell you, beloved, I can guarantee because from a village, 10 people accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and they were thrown out of the village and they were not even allowed to draw water from the village well. the sense or the feeling of minority. When you go and visit the mission fields, these people begin to realize and understand they are a part of a larger group. begin to understand they are not alone but they belong to a larger section. That is why you know Jesus Christ when he sent the missionaries he also went to visit those villages. Not only to encourage them you also will be challenged. You know why I left engineering for evangelism? You know why I just became a missionary? God did not strike me at the noon light as he struck Apostle Paul. Such a thing never happened to me. I'm 60 years old, I never had a flashy vision in all my life. I know audible voice I ever heard from above. I saw the field. I saw the field. The knee became my top. If I resign my job, Hundreds were waiting there to fill up that vacancy. If I don't become a missionary. In the secular world you talk about vacancy. In the mission world it's not a vacancy. Mind it is back home. I'm not playing with words, but yeah. these are facts. You're talking about vacancy in the secular world. I'm talking about vacuum in the field, the mission field. That's why Jesus said, lift up your lives and look beyond. Nothing, I repeat, there is nothing like seeing. Fifthly and finally. What is missionary sending? 
is involving in personal evangelism. Shall I tell you something? These frontier missions are actually an outflow of neighborhood evangelism. There is a Tamil proverb, I'll say it in Tamil, then I'll translate it into English. Hopefully, he will get it across in Malayalam. <laughs> you cannot catch a lizard in your town. How can you go to the other town to catch an elephant? I don't you don't have the problem in Okay, you join one. Okay. You see, we should try to do what we can in our neighborhood. And the outflow, follow my word, these are technical words. The outflow of neighborhood evangelism is frontier mission. Don't simply say, I am supporting missionary work, supporting missionary work. No, this is a good hall. You know why? There are only five pillars in this house. <laughs> pillars are necessary. But suppose the entire hall is filled with pillars. <laughs> oh, that would be very awful. That's a very bad structure. <laughs> but some churches are full of pillars on this. <laughs> What is the use of that power? Supporters are necessary. But supporters must become soul winners. Supporters must become soul winners themselves. The soul, an American soul, or an African soul, or a Filipino soul, next door, here in New York, is as precious as a soul in West Bengal. You better understand that. American Karno, Africa Karno, Filipino Karno, Angani Ullavalde, Atma Aumo, Vendilu Vindu Ullavalde Vindayim. India Ile, Evangiru Varik, Ramanthiru Ullla, Or Aalindya Atma Aumo Vindayim. Tattudya Maada, Daiyo Sarudin, Ondo Oru Maada Vindayim Ullavalde. So our missionary slogan should not be go or send, but it must be go and send. Just 
Will you please put up your hand and put it down immediately? Yes, yes, yes. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the message that came to us with all clarity. It was not to deceive ourselves, but just be here as only help us for God to be doing His own. Yes, Lord, we need to know you as well. Thank you for the message that came to us with all clarity. Thank you for the message that came to us with all clarity. Every one of us, a missionary Christian. Jesus, may we pray. Amen. Amen.